So I'm just trying something a little new. Um, I was leaving today to come out here. It's really, it's perfectly cloudy. And I had my Bible in my hands and suddenly it felt like it was stuck to my hands. And I knew that was the Lord telling me, bring it with you. Uh, which, you know, I certainly had to apologize for because I have not been... Sometimes I draft out the words I share and then I include more scripture. Lately, I've been a little on the run and just, you know, and I'm so blessed by your comments telling me how they've been really uh, helpful. You know, God is so good to use us to minister to one another. It's never one side, it's one another. Uh, but today, you know, he wanted us to take a look at scripture and specifically to talk about the fear of the Lord. Uh, I got us a pine cone for effect. Hallelujah. You're leaning upon my pumpkin coffee. Call me basic. Call me what you want. It's delicious. Delicious. And um, so let's talk about it. And uh, I was actually going to start right here in Matthew 10. But instead, I, I happened to open up here to Psalm 34. Now, the fear of the Lord is not like many of you know these things, but I repeat some things because some people don't. The fear of the Lord is not fear like I'm afraid, right? It's not fear in a sense of the way we'd normally look at. The fear of the Lord is about reverence. Um, I apologize if, if the cars are too loud. I'm, I'm not exactly in the woods. I might go find a little place to camp um, and do this again somewhere in the woods so it's not so loud. I hope you can hear me okay. And I love you guys. Hi. How are you today? Glory to God and greetings to you, my just absolutely delightful family in Christ. You guys give me so much life. Um, thank you just for loving me as I am truly. Um, let me not. Okay. So in Psalm 34, this psalm is about the happiness of those who trust in God. And there's a lot of there's a lot of meat in here. There's a lot of important things in here. So I wasn't going to, but I am going to read it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. So remember, we, we look at scripture and we believe every word of scripture, don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> so look at this. They looked to him and were radiant. For those of you that look to the Lord, you're trusting in the Lord. You got that Holy Spirit glow. That's an effect. You know, when Moses had an encounter, had his encounter with God, he came down from the mountain. His face was shining. You know what I mean? There's really like a level of a dimension, a dimension of transfiguration that takes place when you're in the presence of the Lord. It's just like Moses going up that mountain. When you spend ample time in the secret place with the Lord, people can see it. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This is talking about continence, you know, our continence, the way that our faces look. You know how you look when you're ashamed and you walk around and um, you're just kind of like, you, you got a constant frown on your face, a constant puss. And that is generally, you know, there's a lot of shame rooted in there, okay? It's hard to be joyful and to not walk around looking joyful. Now, I get it, especially with ladies. Like, I have the, as they call it, the resting bee face. <laughs> I don't mean to. Um, and if you, like, I smile, like, with a quickness. It, it's funny. Um, it's kind of probably off-putting. But I, I get it. You know what I mean? But overall, it's all about the fear of the Lord. It's all about trusting the Lord. That'll change you inside and out down to your continents. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Do you hear that? So for those of you who fear the Lord, of course, it's about reverence, reverence. He is a holy God. He is not a human. He is not some false God. 
He is not an ideology. He's not an idea. He's not a, a story. He's not just history. He is the almighty God, real God, as I try to say sometimes, because, you know, we only see these gods in movies. You know, people look at God to see them. Well, guess what? He is the real God that they make movies about. Okay, real God. And the word tells us here that for those of you who fear him, the angel of the Lord encamps all around you and delivers you. This is the word of God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his saints, says you. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing, right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. So if the Lord is truly your shepherd, if you're truly seeking the Lord, you shall not lack any good thing. Oh, here comes the sun. I've lost my clouds. Woohoo, it's hot. I'm going to have to find a new camping spot, but it is pretty. Verse 11 of Psalm 34. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So learning, we learn to fear the Lord. Oh, praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for more clouds. We learn to fear the Lord. We learn to fear him. And we learn that how? By knowing his character. By knowing his character. You can read the word and you can even share the word and really lack understanding of who God is, right? Remember, you you know, sometimes we think we're so far from him, but the truth is, you know, we only have any characteristic we have, any good characteristic at least, because of the Father. That comes from him. He is our source. He is our source. What is good in you comes from the Father. So, just like we had that word recently, if you are chosen, then you know the character of your father, something like that, because you he's given you understanding, he's opened your mind, like he did with the apostles, to understand the scriptures from OT to NT. He is good, he is the same, hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their crime. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Gee. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Hallelujah. This is, I have this highlighted, love this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Let us not go into the counterfeit Christianity. Even the religious spirit who says, oh, if you're going through afflictions, God's punishing you. No, my beautiful family. We see it here in the word. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And you know what I believe? I believe that really deters people when we treat people like, oh, be ashamed to share if you're going through things or God's punishing you. I just had a discussion with someone that I, I used to mentor, but I like to say he graduated past me. Um, you know, he, of course, needed to be with a um with a male you know under a male but generally the lord will bring me lots of baby believers and i'm grateful for that and the goal is always to graduate them to to the meat of you know someone of especially for he sends me a lot of younger men for some reason <laughs> and um maybe it's just like a mothering thing i'm not really sure about that that's a side note but anyway i was just talking with him just yesterday about this because um brother mike if you're listening the lord be with you we love you because something had happened that the, the Lord told him don't do something and he did it and while he was doing it his car broke down and he was like you know alluding to the fact that God punished me and I wanted to clarify that's not true God is not a punisher of his people what it what happened is you went off path and he allowed you to experience what happens when you act against him he allowed you to fall into that to that pit you dug for yourself God is not a punisher of his people and this is how we learn you know it's no shame listen I've done it many times probably for years you know what I mean uh, but then you have the fear of the Lord and you realize you know when I go off path I'm not in his protection but I'm not truly following the Lord 
How can I expect him to protect me when, as it says here, his face is against those who are doing evil and doing evil means doing what I want to do, not what he wants me to do. So many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Hallelujah. So just a little on the fear of the Lord there. Now, when we go to Matthew 10, Jesus, now we have, when we're talking about learning the fear of the Lord, Jesus, who is our rabbi, right? He actually is teaching the apostles here the fear of God. Here in Matthew, in Matthew 10, he is sending them out. He is sending them out. He's telling them as he's sending them out, He's letting them know in preparation, persecutions are coming. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be as wise as serpents and as harmless of doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and will, escort, uh, will scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. So Jesus is preparing the people here in the word. He's preparing the disciples in Matthew 10 as he's preparing us today. Because and these words, every word he's given me over the past several months testify to that. That we are being sent out. That he is equipping us in righteousness. He is teaching us about giftings. He is teaching us that we will be persecuted. So he's teaching us how to love and how to respond and how not to respond. So he's saying, I'm sending you out. Persecutions are going to come. And then immediately he goes into Jesus teaching the fear of God. In uh, Matthew 10, verse 27, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. He's giving instructions, family. Listen. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So he's really teaching the apostles here not to fear men. You know what I mean? We're going to have enemies here. We're going to be persecuted here. Yes, we need to return love for people's hate. However, this is where some cookie cutter Christianity gets it mixed up. We think that love means to kind of like almost revere men. And that's not the case. He says specifically, this is the words of Jesus, our, our Christ, our Messiah, says specifically here, do not fear those who kill the body. He's talking about humans. Fear no man. You know what? My earliest mentor, I often share this, taught me, it's a very dangerous person who is fearless in this world. She's talking about like in this, on this plane, you know what I mean? who is only fearing God, you become a very dangerous person because when you experience persecution, even from high places, they want you to be fearful. Satan, who is the God of this world himself, wants you to be fearful. He's counting on it. Yet Jesus taught us then, he's teaching us now, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot fear the soul, excuse me, cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And then he, he, he wants to really drive that home by saying, you don't have to be afraid because you're so much more important to God than any creature out here. The Lord himself takes care of everything. You're way more important to him than anything out here. Just know that. Listen, he wouldn't be talking about persecution if it weren't coming. Faith rising, remember, as the lights gets brighter, the faith is rising, the darkness gets darker. Persecution is on deck, my family. And that's why we're being taught not to be triggered, not to be offended, and how to love through this. We must lead with love. Let's close up here. In Matthew 10, 32, 
Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. And we all want to be, don't we want to be confessed before the Father by Jesus? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Fear no man, my family, whether in persecution, whether they come for you or not. Fear no man, but only fear God. Love men, but do not fear them. Okay, don't get those wires crossed. Love men, but do not ever fear them. We only fear the Lord. And of course, we love him too.